uh, it's, it's almost as crazy as the Japanese kind of burning their trash, you know, and putting up 19 uh, millisieverts per hour radiation over Tokyo continuously <clears throat> as sulfur dioxide into the oceans. Eventually, the phytoplankton and the coral reefs die. Well, and not to mention strontium-90, which TEPCO is admitting now is flowing literally around the Oh, yeah, and what these the are going to do is, yeah. they, when strontium decays the yttrium, it generates such a high-energy electron or beta emission that if it hits lead, it can actually create x-rays. So you can't have lead around. <laughs> and huh. when someone, huh. So if someone's got strontium-90 poisoning, you can't bring them into a facility and put a lead shield around them. It'll actually generate x-rays because the electron emission is so high, highly energetic. Wow. I didn't know that. All right. Yeah, hold, hold now, so <clears throat> what's happening is the amount of radiation, and it, I looked at all the different stories, and at least admittedly by now, and of course people should realize this is a continuing wound. It's not just one explosion like the graphite reactor at Chernobyl. At least in the exclusion zone, it's 33 times more radiation than the level of radiation of Chernobyl. So this is orders of magnitude worse, and the problem is that there's nothing in sight. They say to, 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 to exceed... At shutdown, will take them 30 years, and that's being really optimistic. Absolutely, the yeah, they got a yeah, they got a yeah. melt through going on. Yeah, yeah. And here's the danger: when that melt through continues to steal, it gets through the concrete, and finally it gets to the groundwater table. It's going to do three things. The first thing that's going to happen is we know that there's ongoing criticality. That they found a lot of, of fresh radioactive iodine 131 in Europe. At first, they thought it was coming from a Hungarian or Czech or another reactor in, in Eastern Europe. No oh. sign. This radiation is coming from all the way around the world, from the west coast of the United States, east coast, across eastern Canada, all the way across the North Atlantic, arriving in Europe <clears throat> and being detected there, which means that with a half-life of eight to eight and a half days, that it had to be an ongoing reading. In other words, the, the northern hemisphere is constantly being salted. So that 33 times Chernobyl in a year or maybe 66 or 100 times Chernobyl in terms of the amount of accumulated radioisotopes that are longer acting. Not short ones, because radioiodine, if it stops, is gone in 32 days rough. You know, you can't really detect it. So, but you are going to detect longer isotopes like cesium-137, strontium-90, and longer isotopes that last, you know, those last hundreds of years half-life. But the longer isotopes like, you know, plutonium, half-life 25,000 years, and uranium, you know, 5 billion years. So, <clears throat> what's going to happen is that the, especially things like cesium and strontium, which are particularly bad, they're going to continue accumulating in the northern hemisphere. So that's number one. The number two is locally, they're going to start having what's called hydrovolcanism, and it's going to be caused by the corium hitting the superheated steam with zirconium and these high-energy neutrons, and they're going to generate a lot of tritiated water, radioactive water, that's superheated, and it'll be where they find two vents. You know, if you go over to the Big Island, you'll see these two vents, or if you go to other islands in Hawaii, and you'll see where there was previous volcanism, and the tubes are now open, and the rainwater washes through them. You say, wow, that's pretty interesting. It looks like a, it was tunneled by some kind of machine. Uh, those are going to go for miles and miles, and it's my prediction that those can go for tens of kilometers away from the site. They're going to pop up all over the place, like a spider. And they'll also pop out probably into the ocean bed in the ocean, so they're going to be dumping fresh... Oh, yeah. Sure. Hot radioactive waste. Constantly. We thought we had a lot already. It's going to be yeah. there's going to be a comet, there's going to be a open conduit to the uh -huh. to the uh -huh. sea floor. So uh -huh. you know uh, everything heading into the the black current or the Humboldt current means that radioisotope. No one's reporting in Canada or Japan or Alaska. No. no. What's going on with radioactivity no. in the fish? Now the the, the only two thing... fisheries on Earth that are we call the most viable fisheries on the planet. The one is off the the, uh, the Pacific coast of South America, off Argentina right. and Chile, and the other is the Alaskan fishery. That's it for the planet. One of the two, in fact, the most prolific fishery on the planet is the Alaskan fishery. And it's been directly in the pipeline for the black current. Well, it's already here, and the, the Canadians tested fish. Now, the Canadians pulled some uh, chicanery here. They said, oh, well, yeah. we're going to test fish. The EPA said, we're not going to test fish. The Canadians tested fish. They refused to disclose where the samples of fish were collected. They would not tell. They tested the fish, and they admitted that all the fish tested had radioactive cesium. But they said, don't worry, far below the level where it could cause any problem to anybody. They didn't mention two things. One, what the hell is the cesium doing in there? Number two, bioaccumulation. 
Right. So what about the fisherman off Fukushima? This guy wrote articles, a 23-year-old kid, for the International Fishing Magazine. He was a great angler, and he kept eating the fish off Fukushima a couple of weeks after the tsunami and quake, and he's dead. He's dead already. Died. Lymphocytic leukemia killed him. Boom. A mayor yep. in Fukushima died. Boom. Lymphocytic leukemia. No, he had enteritis, which was uh, uh, very common and chronically observed among Chernobyl victims. Yeah, so what he, is, he ended up with a, uh, what's called a slow gastrointestinal radiation syndrome, rather than the acute syndrome after a nuclear blast. So, as I mentioned on the last show, there's a slow-onset gastrointestinal syndrome, a slow-onset DNS syndrome, and a slow-onset bone marrow syndrome. Not necessarily an acute onset. And that's why we're seeing, for example, the CNS effect, so that there's, you measure growth hormone release in children around uh, Japan and northern Japan, their growth, they're developing a CNS syndrome and a gastrointestinal syndrome, so that their digestive enzymes are reduced, their growth hormones reduced, they're not growing, they're not putting on body mass. So we're indicating what we call <clears throat> chronic combined radioactive radiation sickness. <clears throat> and that radiation sickness, by the way, is going to start showing up in the next two to three years here in North America. It takes a while, and it'll affect the weaker. For example, did a study at the largest neonatal intensive care unit for premature babies in Philadelphia right after the Fukushima explosion, and it was a 40% increase in fetal mortality rate for premature babies that don't have uh, antioxidant enzymes. The whole northern hemisphere is being salted with radioisotopes, and on top of that now, we've got scalar electropollution, electrotox, <clears throat> from smart meters, and they have two kinds of effects. They have what's called uh, radio frequency toxins that are are harmonic with specific minerals and chemicals in the human body and our biosystems with other life forms. But they have another thing called dirty electricity between 2 and 150 kilohertz. And the Russians and Americans found that these same frequencies are the frequencies that are lethal to life forms. So they know this. This is information that's accumulated back since 19. 20s in Russia and the 1940s in America. <clears throat> and they both found the same basic information. So the, bo the bottom line is, we've got to slide to a break here, is that more and more people, and you, you'll you see it at Rensselaer. More and more people are going to get you know, symptoms. Their, yeah. their symptoms, more and more people are going to be dying in Japan, and they're dying already. And these are these are public figures. The fisherman was a world famous fisherman. The mayor is a mayor. Well, uh, they may not connect Japan, the either. They, the they get heart attacks and strokes well, and the Japan blindness TV, and diabetes that and lots of too, other conditions. That yeah. too. The Japan television journalist who was laughingly eating Fukushima vegetables on his television program oh is now dying of lymphocytic leukemia. And you don't get this at an advanced age. This guy's an older man. So, right. look, you're going to see people dying there routinely and regularly. Then you're going to see the children dying. And you're going to start seeing it over here, as Bill said, in two, three years, unless you take very aggressive action to purge this crap from your body. And On a constant is, it basis. Is, it is doable. Constant basis. Yeah. In other words, it's like the people after Nagasaki and Hiroshima. If you're constantly detoxifying and supplying the body with the things it needs to repair itself, like right. my radiation right. protocol. Exactly. Hold on, Bill. You, you, can, to, you can be fine, but if you don't, yeah. God help you. That's it. Be right back. Uh, and Dr. Bill is with us tonight. He's with us once a week We're talking about Fukushima right now. Let me just quickly read you the latest headlines in the center column where you can find always the most current important news from Japan and boy there's a lot of it I'm having to pick and choose now uh, the corium which is the melted nuclear fuel uh, will hit groundwater now this is being said by the reactor 3 architect himself he knows the mechanism by which the machinery has been broken, the earthquake and the tsunami, and he knows where the corium is going to go. Straight down. It's already gone through the concrete in his view. Uh, TEPCO admits more radioactive water leaking at Fukushima. They didn't bother to say it was strontium-90 uh, laced. There's a ton of strontium-90 going into the ocean. Call for building a barrier under Fukushima reactors. Uh, ridiculous. Silly. Absurd. Fukushima fuel, rod, uh, fuel rods may, oh, they are fuel rods, aren't they? Fuel yeah. rods may be completely melted through, uh, says somebody else. And it, it goes on and on and on. Uh, somebody has projected that the Fukushima melted fuel may already be 40 feet underground. They, they really don't know. 
That's what that's what the bottom. Well, they could is. find out if they put a ground penetrating radar into the slant. Look at it. Well, they probably they are, but they're it. not telling us. So that's that's what. They're yeah, doing. you know, whatever they did, they should have been building a corium catcher underneath it uh, eight nine months ago. They should have uh, been well, putting a Kevlar tent over it, not a solid thing, but a Kevlar right, tent right. to capture the hydrogen and all the radioisotopes and then filter it. But they didn't do that. And now they're remobilizing all these toxins by burning hundreds of thousands of <laughs> tons of radiation uh, carrying uh, debris at these high temperature furnaces. And, uh, you know, at Shinagawa, the level of radiation is mind boggling. I got a report this morning uh, that my wife Michelle sent me about this baby, uh, uh, you know, milk that had 30 becquerel, 30.8 becquerel. Yeah, at the uh, that was at the nursery school they were getting. Yeah, and, and, the, and the level was 200 in their standard. What they do is it's just like in Canada. Canada is a disgusting country. I know up there you may be offended by this, but you are feudal serfs and subjects in another division of the British Empire, and. The scientists always want this squeaky clean, we're Canadian, we would never do anything bad to the environment, which is a pile of hogwash. Our standards are far better here in America, and they're still not reporting. I've been fighting now with the University of California, Berkeley, trying to get them to even talk about the data that they have for the past six months they've even been putting online, and no response from anybody in the nuclear engineering department. I've tried to get laboratories elsewhere to do testing, and nobody wants to report on either food or water or any testing or, you know, having sampling along the coast, U.S., Canada, Mexico. Nobody's doing anything. As they say in the mob, nobody knows nothing. And nobody's going to talk. No. You I have just, to walk uh, down like in Korea with your inspector plus. And by the way, don't get it contaminated because if you get that screen contaminated, it's useless. Yeah, you can yeah, walk along yeah. with your radiation detector, you know, in a nice little case and bring it near the fish counter. And if it goes click, 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 take your cart and go in the other direction. Should you put a plastic bag over it or just keep it away from the object? Um, I think what you do is you just keep it away from the object. You the want plastic to be, bag be, can cut down the alpha and give you uh, screen some of that out. Any Yeah, I would think will. that the thing to do is take it out of your plastic bag for a moment, hold it over there, and you don't need to hold it long. It's going to go click, click, click. It'll respond instantly within, yeah. you, know, you know, six inches to... Uh, a once meter a, or more. Once so, a year, you can send it in for cleaning, a uh, decon, and yeah, uh, calibration. Exactly. The uh, key thing is that put it back inside some container that's going to be not contaminated. Well, if you get the rubber boot for it, you can close the back door on it. Do you have the boot? I do. Yeah, I've got well, you all just the, got a I plastic guess. back door, which is perfect. Yeah, I got the, I got all the fancy gear with it. The the neat thing about the Inspector Plus is that is you can have it sit like where I <laughs> sat it was on my wife's dresser indoors, so it doesn't get exposed to the elements. And I watch it daily, and I see it. The background radiation is around 22 counts per minute. But most of the time, it's running in the high 40s, low to mid 50s. And sometimes it gets in the 60s. And you know right away, oh, yeah, they're really burning a lot of trash in Tokyo. <laughs> or they're, or these, these steam jets are venting off radiation as they build up and they release it. And I expect we're going to have either constant release combined with some big explosions. And they're not going to tell you. Sometimes it might be kilometers away from the site. Correct. The Correct. problem is it's going to bioaccumulate. So yeah, I just say we're a... looking at 2011 now. Pretty soon it'll be 2015. Uh -huh. Maybe there'll be 400 times the amount of uh -huh. Chernobyl radiation uh -huh. Uh -huh. assaulting uh -huh. the entire northern hemisphere. Yeah. And nobody's going to, they'll all say, oh, well, if they do do testing, it'll be a year or so for now. I'll say, well, you know, this is always this way. It was probably caused by above-ground nuclear testing, whatever, from the 1960s. And that's hogwash. What's going on right now? is they're literally having the biological effects of a third nuclear war, or a nuclear war worldwide without the cities on fire. They are. I just got an email from uh, Yochi. He's uh, still in Thailand. He says, uh, a friend in Japan just sent me an article that says traffic accidents have been rising dramatically in Tohoku because of debris falling off the back of dump trucks. Now these really? dump trucks are the dump trucks that are ferrying the radioactive material to Tokyo to be burned. Right, so it's falling off the back and causing yeah. car accidents. He says uh, no mention of the radioactive dust blowing off the debris either, which is probably mm -hmm. a much wider threat to health. It's now the highway to hell. So yeah, these, these I don't know that it's just it's the most insane behavior I've ever seen an organized 
Well, I guess it's a modern country. They're nuking themselves over there.